control that uh, we're going to look at is now what we refer to as the proportional plus derivative mode. The proportional plus derivative mode. Proportional plus derivative mode of control. So proportional plus derivative derivative or what we shall refer to as PD control. We shall refer to as the PD control. So for the PD control, uh, in this case, the derivative uh, control mode is at times it is always used the proportional mode in order to reduce the tendency for oscillations. We know that one major problem with the derivative mode is that derivative mode does not act when the error changes, but rather acts when there is a rate of change in the error. So in that case, there is a tendency for the oscillations. Uh, it, it is always used with the proportional mode in order to reduce the tendency for oscillation and allow a higher proportional gain setting. The derivative control usually provide a change in the controller output, which is proportional to the rate of change of the error. And that is why we usually call it pre-act, because it usually anticipates the future value of the error signal and changes the controller output accordingly. It anticipates a time. That is why it is referred to as pre-act. It anticipates how the error is going to change. And in that case, it uh, changes uh, the controller output accordingly. And this anticipatory action usually make derivative control to be very useful in controlling processes, especially with the sudden load changes. And it is for this reason that uh, we usually use the derivative mode uh, with the proportional or proportional plus integral. When sudden load changes, usually produce excessive error. So the derivative mode of control is always referred to as rate of action or pre-act because of these uh, reasons that we've talked about. It usually opposes the change of a controller variable, which usually help in damping the oscillations of the controller variable. So we can have a representation of the PD uh, controller just like uh, what we have. We can have uh, a representation in this case. So for this, we can have an electronic proportional plus derivative. So this one can be represented in this manner. So we can have uh, can have RF here. Then here. Then it can go to that junction. Then here we can have R1. Then here we can have the capacitor CD. Then here we can have RD. Then input, then at this point we can have the op amp. Then we have that. Then at this point we can have RF. Then of course we have the input E error. Then we have the output V. So that is what the PD control is all about. So if you look at that, uh, then of course there are uh, the equations that are we going to look at as far as it is concerned, especially for the proportional plus derivative. We can very, very fast look at the equations, uh, the equations representing this so that uh, when you are supposed to do an analysis or you are supposed to get some values of, of the parameters that are used in that particular control, uh, mode, then you should be able to get them without any problem. So let's look at the analysis of the equations. We are going to start by looking at the time domain. Time domain equation. So when you look at the time domain equation, then in this case, we have small v plus uh, alpha td dv dt this is always added in order to bring about that limiting, the, the limiting action of how 
the derivative mode usually responds to a step input. Um, that is, is equals to Ke. So the first part is directly proportional to the error. Then the second part is directly proportional to the rate of change of the error. That is Ktd, the error all over dt. And then, of course, plus the initial conditions. So if you get, uh, if you get the Laplace transform of this, then, of course, we are able to obtain the frequency domain equation, frequency domain equation. So for you to obtain the frequency domain equation, then we have capital V, which is going to be given by Ke. So that Ke, that is after reorganizing the whole equation, plus Kt dSe. Then the whole of this is multiplied by 1 all over alpha tds plus 1. And then, of course, that is what we have for the frequency domain. So that one means that we are simply getting from this, we get the Laplace transform of that equation, of course, dv dt, d dt will become s, and then, uh, of course, e will be written in capital letters to show that the domain of the equation has changed from the time domain to frequency domain. Then after that, we can reorganize and may bring uh, E V over E to be the subject in order to obtain the transfer function. Transfer function. So if we reorganize the, the frequency domain equation in order to make V over E to be the subject, and if you do that one properly, then you are going to get K into T D S plus one then all over alpha T D S plus one. Then of course, that is now going to be the time domain equation. The other parameters will remain the same, like uh, the V, small v, uh, the V naught, capital V, uh, small e, capital E, and of course T D will still be the same as uh, the derivative action time constant, that is T D will be given as Rd, Cd, then R1 will be the series input resistance, uh, the series input resistance, and it is in ohms. Rd will be the parallel input resistance, and again it is in ohms. Rf will be the feedback resistance in ohms, and Cd will be the input capacitance in farads. Maybe the value, what will change here is now how the K will be found, because K will now be found by getting the output resistance, which is RF, all over the input resistance, the total input resistance, which is now R1 plus RD. So that is one change that will be there. And again, the value of alpha, that one is, that is responsible for limiting, will now be given as R1 all over R1 plus RD. So those are the equations that are going to bring about, uh, that, that are going to change at least slightly as opposed to other modes uh, that uh, we have looked at. So maybe we can again look at uh, uh, very, very fast uh, an example so that uh, we can uh, see maybe how some of these equations uh, that we've talked about uh, as far as this mode of control is concerned are used. So the equation here, the, the example, so we can look at an example. Example, so we can talk of uh, determine values, determine values of R1, of R1, comma, Rd and R, F, for an electronic proportional, for an electronic proportional, for an electronic proportional, for an electronic proportional, plus derivative controller, controller, with gain K, with a gain, K of 0 
comma, a derivative, action time constant, constant, T, D, of one second, and a value of alpha, a value of alpha of 0 0.1. Use 10 raised to the power negative 6. Use 10 raised to the power negative 6 uh, for capacitor CD. For capacitor CD. Full stop. Determine. Determine the time domain equation and the transfer function. The time domain equation and the transfer function. Determine the time domain equation and the transfer function. So of course, uh, we've been given some of these values. So the first thing that uh, we're going to do is look at, start from what we know, moving from what we don't know. So the first value that we can get very, very easily is RD. And this one, we can get it from the equation. So from CD is equals to RD, CD. We can get what RD is. We know what TD is. So in that case, we are given TD to be 1. So 1 is equals to RD is going to be given by, we'll be given, we don't know what RD is, times 10 raised to power negative 6, which means RD is going to be 1 all over 10 raised to power negative 6, which is simply... If you do that one properly, it is 10 raised to, this is 10 raised to power 6 ohms. That is 10 raised to power 6 ohms. So, of course, now we already know what RD is. So, looking at that, we already know what RD is. And then we can now use the equation for alpha. Because in that equation, the only thing that we don't know is R1. So in order to get uh, R1, so we can use that equation. So from, from the equation alpha is equals to, from the equation alpha is equals to R1 all over, R1 all over, R1 plus Rd. And we know what Rd is, so we can find that and simply say that uh, uh, in that case, we can simply say, that our R1, that alpha, alpha we have been given to be 0 0.1, so we can simply say 0 0.1 is equals to, 0 0.1 is equals to R1, R1 all over R1 plus Rd, which means, which means from there, which means from there, which means from there, we can say that uh, 0 0.1 R1 plus 0 0.1 Rd is equals to R1. And from there, we can simply say uh, 0 0.9. So then that one goes that side. 0 0.9 R1 is equals to 0 0.1 R1. D, which is the same as saying 9R1 is equals to 9R1 is equals to Rd. So that is what we have. So we already have what Rd is. So if we multiply that one by 9, uh, so we can see that 9R1 uh, will be equals to You can see that 9R1, what did we do? 0.9R1 will be equal to that, uh, oh. 0.1R1, 0.1R1, 0.1RD, yeah, I think it's okay, 0.9R1, 
uh, that one. And if you do your calculations very, very well, you will find that R1 will be given as 1.1 times 10 raised to power 5 ohms. That is what you are going to obtain. Then now we have R1, we have Rd. So we can use the other equation for K. So what do we say K is? K we said to be Rf all over R1 plus Rd. So we know what the value of Rf is. So 0 0.8, which is K, is equals to Rf all over 1.11 times 10 raised to the power 5 ohms plus 10 raised to the power 6 ohms, which is simply means that our Rf is going to be all over 1.11 times 10 raised to the power 6. So that is what, uh, then if you do that, then Rf is now going to be 0 0.888 times 10 raised to the power 6 ohms. Then now you are through with finding R1, Rd, and Rf. Now what remains is getting uh, what we refer to as uh, the time domain equation and the frequency domain equation. So for the time domain equation and the frequency domain equation, just go directly to that equation and then uh, insert whatever values that you have and whatever values that you don't have, just leave them that way. Like in that case, if you do that, you are going to obtain small v uh, plus 0 0.1 dv all over dt is equals to 0 0.8 e plus 0 0.8 dE all over dt plus v naught as your time domain equation. So this is the time domain equation. Then the other thing that we've been asked is the transfer function, of course, just get the values and uh, do the substitution. So v over e, if you do that, you are going to obtain v over e as 0 0.8 into s plus 1 all over 0 0.1 s plus 1. And that is now how you get uh, the equation. If you want more examples, you can go to triple e s dot education. Okay, we can look at the last combination here, and that is the proportional proportional plus integral plus derivative, which is always referred to as PID control or at times it is referred to as three mode controller. In this case, the integral mode is always used to eliminate, to, to, to eliminate the proportional offset that is caused by load changes, while the derivative mode reduces the tendency uh, towards oscillations and provides a control action which anticipates changes in the error signal. The derivative mode is uh, specifically very useful uh, when, the, when the process sudden load changes. And the equation, uh, if you look at those combinations, then we can have the equation uh, as V is equals to Ke, and that one means that it is directly proportional. So in this case, the first part is that the error must be proportional uh, to, the, the output must be proportional to the error, and then again, the output must be proportional to the integral of the error that is now responsible for the integral part. And then again, the output must be proportional to the rate of change of the error. And again, you must add to uh, the initial condition. So if uh, this one is the ideal equation uh, for the PID controller, but of course there are several modifications that are supposed to be used in this case, because of the presence of uh, the derivative mode, we must add the equation alpha t d dv dt at the left hand uh, of the, this particular equation. And then again, for the sake of the economy and the implementation of the ideal three mode controller, 
which is always very expensive and it must be competitive. An additional summing amplifier is required in order to add the two signals in order to produce a response as defined by the equation here, the, the, the equation that we, we've just written on the board. Uh, the, the other modification usually consists of forming integral and derivative terms in series. So no matter which one is placed first, well, no matter the, which one is placed first, uh, we usually have both Ti, that is the integral action time constant, and the derivative action time constant, Td. And this one can as well be defined uh, by the equation uh, that uh, we are going to have. So if we have that, this one can be defined by the equation V is given as K into 1 plus Td all over Ti, and you close the bracket, E plus 1 all over Td plus Ti, then the, all of this, no, then this one goes to the integrator, uh, the integral uh, t between 0 and t, E dt plus Td uh, Ti all over Td plus Ti, the error all over dt, and then of course this one plus the initial condition. So this one can be our equation two. We can talk of this one as equation one. So if you look at this equation, we can let, if you let, you say, let k, no, k prime, comma, ti prime, and td prime represent the equivalent ideal gain, and also the integral integral time and also the derivative time. So in this case, if we talk of that, then if we rewrite, uh, if we look at those equations, then we can find that the same equation can be rewritten as if we represent them in that order. So we can also, if we consider that k prime is going to be given as k into one plus td all over ti, then ti, prime is given as td plus ti, then td prime is given as td ti all over td plus ti, then we can say that v will be given as k that considering the equation two, k prime into e plus one over ti prime integral or between 0 and t, e dt plus t d prime, the error all over dt plus v naught. So if you look at the equation, the first equation, we have rewritten the second equation in terms of the first equation. And in that case, that is now uh, what we have. So in that case, we can always use those constants as that. So you can always have the figures um, on how this one can be rep represented. So we are going to look at uh, the figures where in the first case we can look at uh, uh, when it is, when the integral, uh, when the derivative is at the input, and then in the second case when the integral is, is at the input. So the de first case derivative is at the input, in the second case, we consider integral at the input. And then we can look at the various uh, equations as far as it is concerned. And then from there, we can uh, do analysis and maybe uh, one, more ex one example on this. So we can look at the equation. Uh, the first case, uh, we can look at the equation when the derivative is at the input. So it can be two equations. You can start with any, but the most commonly used one is when the derivative is at the input. So we can look at that. So we can say, so the first case, we can talk of having RD here. Then here we have CD, then we have that. 
then of course here we can have the sister then here we have that junction then we can have ri then c i then we have the up here then of course that then as usual our input is the error and then the output is v so that is the first case considering the input to be uh, derivative so if you look at the first figure it is just a schematic diagram of a three mode controller in which the derivative action is formed at the input to the open and the integral is formed at the uh, feedback circuit so if you look at this if we talk of uh, this case then what will be the time domain equation so the time domain equation will simply the, the so we can talk of the time domain equation maybe we can have the two diagrams first in the second case we can have uh, the, the case where we have uh, uh, can talk of that ci then ri then the junction there then you have the o pump then here we can have c1 then c1 can go to rd then parallel to it we can have c2 we have that then this one joins at that point then here we have E, the error as the input, and then of course V as the output. So that is the second diagram whereby uh, the integral is formed at the input and the derivative action is formed at the feedback circuit. So if you look at uh, the various uh, equations that uh, can be used in this, uh, in the analysis of this, we are going to start by looking at uh, the time domain equation to start by looking at the time domain equation and uh, when we look at the time domain equation I'm going to start by looking at the time domain equation so uh, we can start by looking at time domain equation so of course the time domain equation the first part we have to add because of the presence of the derivative action uh, so we must have alpha td dv all over dt on the left hand side in order to bring about that limitation factor to the in to the step input with the reference to the derivative uh, control mode so that one will be given as k into 1 plus td over ti td over ti and you close then we have e plus 1 all over td plus ti then integral between 0 and t of e dt plus td plus td ti all over td plus ti td plus ti uh, the error all over dt and of course plus v naught and then the all of this uh, the all of that is now the equation so if you get the Laplace transform of that that is d dt changes to s and then reorganize the equation and make uh, v to be the subject then v is going to be given by k v is going to be given by k uh, into 1 plus 1 all over tis and of course tds plus 1 all, all over of, of course that one we multiply then we multiply by 1 all over alpha tds plus 1 then all this is multiplied by E. Then we can make V over E to be the subject and rearrange everything to, in order to obtain the transfer function. Of course, this is now what we call the frequency domain equation. No? This is the frequency domain equation. Then we can now look at time domain equation. No, not time domain equation, but rather transfer function. So when we look at the transfer function of the same, then in this case, uh, the transfer function, uh, the transfer function will be given by 
making v over e the subject, that is v output over input, is going to be k uh, into tis plus 1 all over tis. Then that one you multiply by tds plus 1 all over alpha tds plus 1. And of course, that is now the representation. So depending on which particular circuit uh, that you are referring to, we can have the value of k changes. Huh? So when you talk of the figure one for figure one, you can talk of figure one. For figure one, k will be given as, uh, for figure one, the resistances uh, that we have, k will be given as ri, which is the output resistance, all over the sum of the two resistances, that is uh, R1 plus Rd will give you K. Then alpha will be given as R1 all over R1 plus Rd. Alpha is R1 all over R1 plus Rd. Then, of course, if you talk about Ti, will be the same. That is now for figure one. Huh? For figure one, Ti will still be Ri, Ci. Then Td will be the same as Rd, Cd. So we can talk about the figure two. If you talk about figure two, the figure two, then of course K will now be, we can express K in terms of the capacitor. So K will be given as Ci over C1. Then Ti, so alpha will be given as C2 over C1 plus C2. And of course Ti will be the same. Ri, Ci, and Td will now be Rd into C1 plus C2. So that is uh, the expression that will change. And in most cases, uh, we usually use the first case. So I want us to look at an example whereby, an example of calculation whereby we are going to use the first case. And then I think with that, we are going to uh, uh, put an end to the discussion as far as the modes of control are concerned. So let's look at an example very, very fast using the first uh, case. So I'm going to leave it and write the example. So in the, this case, uh, the example here is that determine the values of R1, Ri, and Rd. So example, uh, example, determine the values of R1, Ri of R1, comma, Ri, comma, Rd, and Cd for a three-mode controller, for a three-mode controller as shown above. The following controller parameters are desired. The following controller parameters are desired. The following controller parameters are desired. K, so we got the value of K is equal to four. Ti is equal to seven seconds. Td is equal to 0 0.5 seconds. And finally, alpha is equal to 0 0.1. Use 10 raised to the power negative 5. Farad capacitor. Farad capacitor for CI. Determine the time domain equation at the transfer function. Determine the time equation and transfer function. So that is uh, what uh, we have. So very, very fast we can look at the solution and then look at uh, the equations that we are going to use. So in this case, the first uh, value that we can easily get is uh, Ri because we know what Ti is. So we are going to first of all start by getting Ri. 
uh, Ri. So from Ti, we know that Ti is equals to Ri Ci. So in that case, uh, our Ti is 7 is equals to Ri. We don't know what Ri is, but we know what Ci is. So Ci, we have been given to be uh, times 10 raised to negative 5 micro uh, times 10 raised to negative 5 farads. So if you do that, then making Ri to be the subject is going to be 7 all over 10 raised to the power negative 5, which is going to give us 7 times 10 raised to the power 5 ohms. So that is the value of Ri. After finding Ri, we are supposed to get uh, the other values. So we still have R1 and Rd. We can use alpha. So alpha is equals to R1 plus uh, R1 all over R1 all over R1 plus Rd. We don't have any of these values, but we can, of course, we can express one in terms of the other. Then again, get to the equation for the K, and then we can always get the value. So in that case, we can get uh, that 0 0.1 is equals to R1 all over R1 plus Rd. So that one means that 0 0.1 R1 plus 0 0.1 Rd is equals to R1. And in that case, we can say that Rd is going to be given by 9R1 if you simplify that equation. That is, <coughs> taking this, subtracting it from there, then of course multiplying by 10 to avoid the decimals. So that one will become Rd uh, is equals to R 9R1. So we can leave that equation in that manner and then we'll come back to it later on. So in that case, we can get to the other equation where k is given as ri all over r1 plus rd and can, ex can get expression for this and we will find a way of linking them in order to get the values of the resistances r1 and rd so in that case we can find r uh, we can get the expression for that of course we have been given k so that case 4 is equals to ri ri do we have ri not yet, so it's going to be Ri all over R1 plus Rd. And then we can talk of, we know what Ri is, so that is going to be given us Ri, we say that is 7 times 10 raised to the power 5 all over R1 plus 9 R1. Remember we had already gotten the value of uh, Rd to be that. So that one means that we have that one all over 10 R1. So we can say that 10 R1. So in that case, we can simply say that adding the two, of course, that is equals to 4. So we can say 40 R1 is equals to, we can say that 40 R1 is equals to, uh, 40 R1 is equals to 7.5 times 10 raised to the power 5. And of course, it means that R1 is equal to 7.5 times 10 raised to the power 5 all over 40, which is uh, 1.75, which is 1.75 times 10 uh, raised to power 4 ohms. So that is what R1 is. So if we want to get Rd, Rd, there is an expression that was linking Rd and R1. So Rd is going to be 1.75 time, times 10 raised to the power 4 times 9. So that is what will give us Rd times uh, 9, which from, from uh, the value of Rd is equals to 9 R1. And that one, if you do it properly, we are going to get 1.575 times 10 raised to the power uh, 5 ohms. times 10 raised to the power 5 ohms. Then from there, we go back to the equation TD is equals to RD CD. Then from there, we know that TD from what we were given, TD is equals to 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is equals to RD, which is 1.575 times uh, CD. So we don't know what CD is. So if you want to get CD, it's going to be 0 0.5 divided by 
So this 1.575 times 10 raised to power 5 times CD. So that is going to be 1.575 times 10 raised to power 5 C. And then, then that is now what CD is. So if you divide properly, you should find that CD is 3.17 uh, times 10 raised to power minus 6 farads, which can as well be represented as uh, 3.17 micro farads. Then after that, now we have obtained the values of R1, Ri, Rd, and Cd. So what we are remaining with is uh, uh, the, the time domain equation as well as the transfer function. So this one, you simply get the equation and then insert the values, uh, all the values that you have and leave alone the values that you don't have. So we are going to start uh, by looking at uh, the time domain equation. So for the time domain equation, we can uh, put in the value so that uh, we can have all these particular values. Huh? We can look at what, from the time domain equation, we are supposed to get what alpha TD is. And if you look at that, alpha TD will be 0 0.1 times 0 0.5, which is simply 0 0.05. Then, after that, we can look at another value, uh, and, and in this case, k into 1 plus td all over ti. Then this one is going to be 1 all over 0 0.5 plus uh, 1 all over 0 0.5. Now this is k. k is 4 into 1 plus 0 0.5 all over 7, which is simply 4 into 1.07, which if you do properly, you are going to get 4.28. Then 1 all over Ti plus T, or 1 over Td plus Ti is going to be 1 all over 0 0.5 plus, Z plus 7, which is simply 1 over 7.5 which is going to be 0 0.133. Then TD, TD, TI, all over TD plus TI is going to be 0 0.5. You multiply by 7 all over uh, 0 0.5 plus 7, which is simply 3.5 all over 7.5, which is simply 0 0.46, 0 0.467. And now you have all the parameters that you have, you needed. So you simply insert them in the in the general equation uh, for the time domain equation for this, which is now go. If you do that, then we are going to find the time domain equation to be v, that is small v plus 0 0.05 dv dt is equals to 4.28 uh, into e plus 0 0.133 integral of E dt, that is between 0 and t, uh, plus 0 0.467 dE all over dt, then close the bracket plus the initial condition, which is that. And then the transfer function, so this is the time domain equation. Huh? So we were looking at the time domain equation and then defining all the parameters that are found in the time domain equation. Then after that, we now look at the transfer function. For the transfer function, we also just do the same, insert the values. V all over E is going to be given by, uh, we have 4 into 7S plus 1 all over 7S. Then close that. Then you multiply by 0.5S plus 1 all over 0.05s plus 1, and that is now the transfer function. So you have obtained all the values that uh, you are given. So for further problems, you can as well refer to the website, that is triple es.education.